All right, so Project 240 has been driving good now, so we're gonna go ahead and actually paint it today. So what we're gonna be doing for the painting is doing a Rust-Oleum paint job on it, all the way from start to finish, and we're gonna see how it turns out. Hopefully it comes out good. The color of choice is a gloss smoke gray, which uh, I really like. It's kind of like the Scion TC gloss gray that they have on the newer models. Now, if you don't know what Rust-Oleum is, it is a household paint and you can find it at hardware stores and it's about $35 a gallon and that's what I'm gonna be using. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is wash the whole car down just like you would a normal car wash with some soap and some water. That's basically just to get all the dirt off of the surface so that way when we go to sand, we don't have any contaminants in it that's going to mess up all of our sandpaper and possibly leave some scratch marks on it. Alright, so now that the car is washed, we're going to go and wet sand the car with the 400 grit sandpaper. And so basically that's just going to give us a nice surface for when we start painting the Rust-Oleum on. As you can see with just the mud flap removed, this is the paint from the original paint of the car and here is where the previous owner didn't take the time to actually remove the mud flap and just spray it over, which is why you have all this drip over here and all of this junk on the edges. So now we can actually wet sand that and then when we paint it, you get a nice clean finish and when we go put the mud flap back on, it's also nice and clean looking. And after sanding came bodywork. All I know is that right here, this is where the previous owner had an accident and there are some pinholes from the previous body filler on here so I'm going to be using some putty to fill in all these uh, previous scratches and holes in this quarter panel and that's what I'm going to be doing as far as my body work goes. Then, then after doing the body work, which I didn't have footage of, it came time to wipe down the whole car with mineral spirits and that included the door jams and edges. Now after cleaning with mineral spirits, I went ahead and mashed off the car. Okay, so I just finished masking the car off. Uh, this is the whole entire engine bay masked off. The reason for this is just from the overspray from the fenders. Also the headlights have been masked off even though they are uh, pop-up headlights. I still mask them off just in case because of the gap in the bumpers, so there could be some possible overspray that gets there. All the vents right here, these are just roughly masked off. The reason for that is because a light will be inserted here, so all this will be covered anyway, so it doesn't need to be a nice line. And then over here, there is a vent that goes in its place, so also, again, doesn't need to be masked off that nicely. Mainly just to prevent any overspray from going into and um, past the uh, bumper. Okay, now, even though you can't see, the radiator back here is masked off. Of course, my mirrors are masked off because I wanted them still to be what they were painted. But this keyhole right here is just my plug. Basically, you just take a piece of masking tape and scrunch it up and you can fit it in this hole and it's perfect. If you wanted to get a nicer fit, of course, you could have taken off the door handles and done it individually, just like the taillights but I just did it this way because I didn't want to do that. The hood over here, we have toothpicks that go inside the windshield washer sprayers. The taillight section. These are all masked from the inside. So from the trunk area, I actually put pieces of tape in order to mask off each and every single one of the holes for uh, screws as well as for the actual taillight. Okay, so here's the side marker right there from the inside, antenna hole from the inside. And then of course, another front side marker there. And as far as the, the wheels and tires go, I'm gonna be putting just basically trash bags on top of it once I actually have it in the final form, which is gonna be in with the whole paint booth setup. The muffler right here has been masked off as well. Okay, so that is it. Now with the masking done, go ahead and get the paint booth set up 
and get preparations for paint. Okay, so the car is all completely masked off now. And here's the paint booth I created inside. Basically just a whole bunch of drop cloths taped up to the ceiling and all the doors. Now what I'm gonna have for circulation is just one 20 inch box fan. Right here. And of course this is gonna be taped around it. And that's just gonna be blowing out the air with a filter in front of this. So that'll basically just be sucking all the, the paint dust out and it'll get trapped in the filter so there's really no overspray to the outside world either. And that's about it. Now I'm gonna be painting the car at this time but because a lot of the process is time sensitive and I can't get footage of actually doing it because I don't want my camera of course to get paint on it, I'm gonna explain to you the process that I'm gonna be doing. First thing is to wipe down the car one more time with mineral spirits just to clean it off right before you're actually painting it. Following the mineral spirits, I went ahead and used a tack cloth on the whole car and basically what that does is it picks up all the small little um, dust and dirt particles that could still be on the car. So that's right before you're painting it. And then after that comes the actual painting process. So the mixture that I'm gonna be using for the paint is 80% Rust-Oleum paint to 20% mineral spirits and those are basically mixed together and spray through the uh, paint gun. The paint gun I'm using is a high volume low pressure gun, also known as a HVLP gun from uh, Harbor Freight. And that is gonna be sprayed at 25 to 30 PSI with the trigger pulled on the gun. So here's the car now. And this is with the mineral spirits wiped down on it. I also went with a clean rag and cleaned off. I basically went over all the surface with the mineral spirits on it although it's still kind of wet, so I'm waiting for it to dry out. And once the mineral spirits is dried out, I'm gonna go ahead and then uh, use the tack cloth on the surface, and then once it's tack cloth, we can mix up our paint and then spray it. I'm now done painting it. Okay. Basically, I can't really tell you how many coats this is because it was random. If I needed to touch up anywhere, I basically just touched it up. And also a cool thing about the Rust-Oleum from what I'm seeing so far is that it doesn't really matter how you paint it whatsoever because at first I was trying to do it the proper strokes across the panels, but then because of my limited space, like no joke, I probably had uh, two feet, okay? And I had to carry around a compressor and get far enough away from the paint with the paint gun, plus including my body. So I was basically backed up against the wall on the entire area. So with that, I couldn't always get the angles that I wanted to, like I would if I had a proper paint booth or if I were outside. So a lot of times it was kind of misdirectional or just spotted. So like, let's say if I needed to paint here, I would simply just bam, bam, paint it there, you know? So by, by doing that, I got full coverage, which was pretty cool. And um, after that, it became a lot easier to paint because rather than trying to get a good stroke in all the time, um, I just like kind of just sprayed the paint wherever I needed to paint it. And it was good. I got covers all the way down on the bottom because of that. Inside the, the fenders right there, you see on that um, on the lip on the inside, I got painted there. Especially on that front bumper because there's basically a wall there and there's probably a foot of space in front of that. So imagine my body plus an air compressor plus a paint gun trying to spray that whole front bumper with only a foot of room in front of it. So it really came in handy. Okay, so anyways, so we're going to let this dry for maybe... Uh, 24 hours or a little bit longer than that. And then I'm gonna unmask it all. And then hopefully it turns out good. Then the second day I ended up respraying basically the whole entire car because I missed so many spots on the first day of painting. Here it is. This is the second day. Basically almost 24 hours after I painted it the first time. Now at this point the painting was done, but it was one of the worst workplaces I've had to deal with before. So I'm gonna do a little reenactment of that. Anyways, I eventually finished it.
Now, some of you guys might remember that this car came with Type X taillights already installed on the car. Well, I'm actually switching from those taillights to clear taillights as seen on the right of the car. Now, I know all the 240 guys right now are flipping out on why I'm switching from JDM Type X tails to the clear tails, but here are the reasons why. Reason one, ever since I first saw clear taillights on the internet, I, I wanted them. I thought they looked extremely clean. Just like, they just look really sick to me. Reason two, the car didn't have the lower metal piece that's supposed to go with the Type X taillights. Instead, it still had the standard 240 uh, metal trim piece underneath. And so that made the fitment of the taillights pretty poor. So I didn't like that. Reason three, the car also didn't have the matching key tumbler for the Type X taillights. So basically with the standard 240 key tumbler, which is basically the key slot for opening up the trunk where you put your key into, well that is recessed about an inch back with the Type X taillights on there. So I couldn't really open my trunk up from the actual back because the key never actually reached the tumbler. Reason four. I thought that I might smash the taillights while drifting and I didn't like the idea of smashing taillights that cost $400. Reason five, I sold the taillights for $400 and the clear tails only cost $125. Then because the Type X taillights and 240 taillights have different uh, light bulb housings in the back, I had to buy stock 240 taillights in order to take the bulb housings out of those and put them in the clear tails. Oh, these are like, yeah, these are pretty awful. <laughs> Dude, I only needed them for the back and that's, that's sick. There we go, right there. That's what I need. Look at that, plastic still fresh, connectors on there, bulbs in there, everything in included. That's dope. Also, you can't forget the orange bulbs for the turn signal. It actually came with the clear tails. Gotta be street legal. Okay, I'm doing a little side angle shot so that way you can see how it looks when you're right. Okay, so this concludes episode five of the Drift Car Build, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as always. Now, I just have a few comments about the Rustoleum paint job. It's kind of a temporary solution. It's gonna be on there for a little bit of a while until I get it repainted, of course, but I just did it mainly because I didn't like that rattle cam paint job at all. It just made it look so ghetto and cheap. So, you know, a Rustoleum paint job was less than $40 a gallon of paint. 
So that was the basically the budget solution for how to paint the car and actually make it look pretty decent without investing a lot of money, of course, into painting it. If I were to do it again, of course, I'd probably go with a different paint. And I'm looking at the tcpglobal.net or .com paints. I'm not associated with them, but I just want to let you guys know. And they have a, a ur acrylic urethane single stage paint that's about $100 a gallon. So I'd probably be going something like that if I were to paint it next time. And mainly just because you get a whole bunch of different color choices that way instead of having to stick with the Rust-Oleum. And it actually looks pretty decent. This still looks way better than before, but obviously those paints are going to you know, look way better than the Rust-Oleum. Now, if you have any questions or wondering about anything, you go ahead and leave a comment. And I try to respond to all questions within 24 hours. And a lot of times I don't... Uh, respond to the comments and that's just because the comment isn't asking a question but trust me guys i read every single one of the comments so i really do appreciate that because it means a lot to me that, uh, reading you guys' comments and seeing whether or not you guys like these things and then also um, as far as the likes go on the video i also really appreciate seeing the likes on the videos because it just shows me that people actually watch and like the video which i don't know maybe to you guys doesn't seem like a lot but to me it actually means a lot so i really do appreciate that guys and of course if you'd like to keep updated on the builds you can go ahead and subscribe as well so I am the RC Devil and I'll see you guys next time.